So what are the three ways to remove the deepest, the darkest and the most extreme dark circles? Well, number one, Botox. Number two, frequency separation. And number three, frequency separation with a little more control. Of course, we're going to focus on the latter two methods. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you might ask, Udmesh, why frequency separation? Well, if you try to use the patch tool right here, as before we have learned in previous eye bag removal tutorials, it is not going to work in this case. Why? Because the dark circle is just too extreme. Have a look, the texture is compromised. The texture under the eyes doesn't look like that. If it was not too extreme, we could do something like this and then we would go to edit, fade patch selection or use the shortcut, control shift F, command shift F and just decrease the opacity and it would work. But in this case, it just won't. And also using the patch tool, the clone stamp tool or any other tool like that, the texture is gonna be replaced and this is not something we want. We want to keep the textures intact. So how do we do that? First of all, let us apply frequency separation. But before we get into it, thank you to our sponsors. And this video is sponsored by me, Piximperfect. If you're looking for something to help you with compositing, look no further than Piximperfect compositing panel. Everything about compositing is arranged in proper steps. So you don't ever have to worry about where to start and what to do next. For instance, you can easily match colors by just copying the background and pasting an adjustment as a curve. And there you go, it's done. You can remove shadows with just two buttons. You can bring in images with all of the background removed. You can arrange them, you can align them. You have unlimited presets, some funky overlays. You're gonna love it. So check it out at pix.live slash compositing. Back in the magical world of Photoshop. And before we get started, I have a gift for you. Check the links in the description to download the free frequency separation action. If you want to learn more about frequency separation, you can watch this video. It goes more in depth from scratch. Watch that later. So first thing we would do is to check whether our image is 8-bit or 16-bit. How do we know that? Have a look right here at the image tab, document tab right here. It says RGB8, which means it's 8-bit. Another way to check is by going to image, adjustments, sorry, mode. And inside of that, you have 8 bits per channel checked, which means that it is 8 bits. Now, let us open up our actions and download the action, load up the action. How do you load up the action? Click on the hamburger icon or the grid right there, whatever you want to call it, and click on load actions right there, load the action, and then you can play the 8 bit or 16 bit based upon whatever bit your image is. So let us play the 8 bit. And now take the slider all the way to the left hand side. Slowly and gradually increase it to the point where the eye bag starts going away. All right. So that is our threshold. So let's increase it. Now, if you want to do more work and spend more time, of course, you can stop where the skin textures go away. But I would go a little more. The higher you go, the lesser control you have, but the lesser you have to work. So you have to find that sweet spot. If we go beyond 30 right here, you see the eye bags are starting to merge away. So we need to choose a value below it. Let us go for 28 and hit OK. That should be fine. Now, what is crazy about this is that have a look at this. If you open up this group, we have the image divided into high frequency and low frequency and both are absolutely different. So here's the low frequency, which has the color information. And here's the high frequency, which has the texture information. Combined, they give you the exact same image. How do we know it gives you the exact same image? Well, here's the original image turned on. If we turn off the frequency separation group, it is the same image. And that is how we know it gives you the exact same image. Now, how do we remove the dark circle keeping the texture intact? Now that we know the texture is already separate, all we have to do is to just turn it off for the moment if you wish. And just above the lower frequency, you can create some layers to remove the eye bag or make the image as if there was no eye bag. There are a couple of ways of doing it. You can just go creative in there. There's just no one way. Maybe the way you figure out will be the best for you. Your only goal is to make it look like there was no eye bag in there. There are a couple of ways you can approach it. Number one, you can make a copy of low frequency layer by pressing Control or Command J. And then you can remove it now with the help of the patch tool since it's not gonna affect the texture. So that's one of the ways. So let us try doing it and let's see what problems we face if we do it. I'm so sorry about it. So let's do a proper selection and let's try to remove that. Now it's removed, it's gone, but still it's dark. So how do we remove the darkness? And there are some lines, of course, you can just select these and try to remove that, select these and try to remove that. And to make it brighter, you can do a little bit of dodging and burning. So let's create a brand new layer on top, change the blend mode to soft light, take the brush white as the foreground color, set the flow to about 2%, that's already fine, and just brighten it a little bit. That's all. Maybe we need to recolor a couple of things. So that's one way of doing that. Now, when you turn on high frequency, it should be gone. Now, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Here's the before, here's the after. 
that's looking pretty swift. Now, what I recommend is simply painting. Let us delete both of these middle layers or in other words, fillers. So I recommend creating a layer in between, calling it filler because that's what it is. Take the brush and just paint. Take a sample and paint. You can also turn off the high frequency and take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and just paint. Make sure flow is low and make it as if there was no eye bag to begin with. Let us turn on high frequency and then do it so that we can clearly see what the kind of results that we are yielding. I would make the flow even higher to have more brush power. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and just paint. You can also take a sample of the dark areas and define these lines. Remember, we have to keep it natural, as natural as possible. You can reshape the entire eye with this technique. While you're doing this, I also recommend zooming out a lot. Then you begin to see certain things that we were missing out. Let's correct them. This looks absolutely incredible. Wanna have a look at the before and after? So here is the after, here's the before. You see that? magically removed. Now when we look at the before and after, I feel that this merging area is not as good. So let's take a sample and paint. Let's also paint a little bit pinkish right here to add some color. And there you go. It looks more natural. So here's the before. Here is the after. You can just go on and on in retouching. It is hard to stop. So that, my friend, is frequency separation. There's also another slick way, and that gives you a little more control over the texture. Now, it's good for small areas. If you're doing the entire portrait, I would still recommend frequency separation. It's also a different form of frequency separation. So let's first of all make a duplicate of the same layer right here. So select that layer, click on the hamburger icon, and then let's go ahead and choose a duplicate layer. And we're gonna choose a new document right here. And that's how you can make a new document from the same layer. And this is method two and click on OK. Now in this method, we just create a texture layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And to make sure that the texture doesn't have any color, we desaturate the layer by pressing Ctrl Shift U, Command Shift U. There you go. Now let's go to filter, convert for smart filters. And why do we do that? So that we can change how fine or thick the texture is later. Now let's go to filter, other, you already guessed it, high pass. We're gonna choose a value similar to that and stop at the point where the eye bag starts showing up. So right here it starts showing up. So we're gonna choose a lower number like 30 in this case. Keep in mind, we can change this later. Now this is a texture, we want it to be projected. So let's change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Right now the texture is above the actual texture, so it's doubling down. We don't need that. We only want the texture to be applied in areas where we paint the eye bags, okay? So if we create a new layer above the background layer and start painting the eye bags like this, I'm just gonna paint some random colors right here, like this. We take this, we paint the eye bags, we take this, we paint the eye bags, we fill it up. We only want the new texture that we just created to show up above this painted area, not anywhere else like it is doing right now. It's doubling down on the texture. So how do we limit the texture just to this area? By creating a clipping mask. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers. You see this icon right there? As soon as we hold the Alt key or the Option key, just click there and there you go. Now it is just limited to that painted area. And that's what we're gonna do. Now let's first set it to how it was. Let's delete this layer. This is how it was, right? We're gonna create a new layer, and this is also a filler. There we go. And limit this texture layer to the filler by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. Now, we'll paint the exact same thing that we did right here. Now, I do the hard work. Let's copy this filler. Control or Command A, Control or Command C, and let's go to filler, Control or Command V. Now it's pasted somewhere else. How do we make sure that when we paste something, it is pasted at the exact same position? Instead of Control or Command V, press Control Shift V or Command Shift V. There you go. That is done. Now the advantage with this method is that you have the control over how much texture you want. You can double click on the high pass and you can control in real time whether you want more fine textures like this. Of course, this is unrealistic or more coarse detailed textures. If you go too high, you see the eye bag, right? So there's a catch right there. So you have to find that sweet spot that works for you. So I'm gonna go with somewhere around even 50, 54 is looking fantastic in this case. So this is one way. Or if you don't want all of that textures, giving all of those details, you can even go lower like 42. There you go. So that is another way of doing that. Now, for some reason, in this extreme case and extreme case only, this technique gives me a little better result. If you want to compare, you can go to Window, Arrange, to up 
vertical. There you go. So on the left, we have the method two, and on the right, we have frequency separation. Now for frequency separation, the texture extends properly. In this case, it doesn't, which we are using to our advantage. So it really doesn't matter which one you use. I sometimes use this one because it looks nicer to me for little areas, little extreme areas. So that's all up to you. Both of the methods are in your hands. It's up to you to what you choose and what you like. And if you have a method number three, go ahead and use it. It's all fine. Anything that works for you is the best for you. So that is how to remove super extreme eye bags in Photoshop. Two ways. Number one, frequency separation. Number two, frequency separation with a little more control. First, you run the frequency separation action. The image is divided into high frequency texture and low frequency color and tone. All you do is create a filler. Your only goal after you have separated the frequencies is if you turn off the high frequency, it should look as if there was no eye bag. Now you can use a variety of methods to approach it. You can use the mixer brush, you can use the patch tool, you can just start painting, you can do whatever you want. In this example, I just started simply painting on a layer above it to make it look as if there was nothing. And then when you turn on high frequency, there you go, it's gone. You can also keep the high frequency turned on and paint up to you. The second method uses a similar approach where we just create a texture by making a copy of the original image, desaturate it by pressing Control shift u Command shift u and then apply the high pass filter and change the blend mode to overlay since that texture is a projection. Now we limit the texture only in the areas we paint with the help of clipping mask and start painting. We paint the exact same thing and there you have the eye bags removed. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. And don't forget to sleep well, stay hydrated so that you don't have to have that much eye bags. But if you're still having issues, please speak to your doctor. I'm not a medical professional. Thank you. Go!